uh, better integration of all the services so that mental health, physical health actually learn to work together, learning disabilities, the whole lot. Because if you've got, I care for somebody with complex needs, and one of the issues we have is that one department doesn't talk to another department. So if we could just get people to actually work together and realise that everything is not a one-off thing, it's everything works, mental health needs to work with physical health, physical health needs to work with mental health. Our health service here in Tower Hamlet is absolutely excellent. I have no complaints at all about it. And uh, I'm a member of the uh, patients' doctors uh, group up at our surgery, Chris Street. And uh, I find it, it's just wonderful what they're doing. Waiting times at hospitals. Yeah. I'd like them reduced. The employment systems have, impro have improved better over the years, but I'd like it a little bit more. Personally, I think they should be a little bit more easier. So that you don't have to book an appointment when you're ill. You can like, I need an appointment today, rather than, oh, can you come back in next week? Some place you have to book surgery, I have personal experience, you have to book three or four months in advance. Oh, sorry, three, two or three weeks in advance. And with hospital appointments, like, I'm under the hospital myself, and I have to wait two or three months to be seen by a doctor. To be like it was when we could get an appointment the next day. I mean, now we have to wait a fortnight. Usually because of when people are sick, they're, they're very challenging to go to the GP. I think if it's kind of quick access to prevent them from going to any unnecessary, I think this is quite good. And maybe a nurse-led clinic, because the nurse can see three after patient in the health service before they see the GP, and that's prevent them from going to A&E as well, which is very good. Yeah, Maybe open longer hours. That is a good one. And weekends maybe sometimes. Yeah. I think the government needs to continue funding the NHS, putting money where there's greater need, uh, like reducing waiting time, uh, putting money where there's a high demand, like uh, hip replacements for the elderly. I mean, they, they need to put some money where the elderly needs it more, because these, the, these are the people who have been putting so much money into the NHS through the national insurance contribution, and I think it should be fair for them to be a recipient. I think I would like to see a system which is much more flexible when it comes to gaining access to the different community health services. Um, once you get the service, whether we're talking about audiology or uh, district nurses or continent services, the services are very good. But getting to them in the first place is a real obstacle course. And I think there needs to be a much better telephone service and means of responding to people when they get in touch with you. Perhaps there's an opportunity to develop the skills of um, frontline staff such as GPs, receptionists, and develop and train them so they can signpost people better to existing services. And yes, there, there, there is a role there and an opportunity to improve. Um, access for the for patients. We need, and I do use the word we, to move away from, you know, it's just the role and they're the receptionist and they have a very specific prescribed role. You know, it, it really is patient customer service. Easy access, much better facilities for carers and understanding the carer's role and of work that we actually do, instead of being looked at as, oh, you're not the expert, we, I am, when you're the one that lives with a person 24 hours a day very often and knows the slight, very small signs that they quite often miss. Um, probably a lot better, not necessarily just access to a GP, but maybe just be able to get hold of a nurse when you know it's something not terribly important, but you just want some reassurance. Oh, uh, comfortable chairs to sit on, actually, if you've got to sit there for a little while. And, uh, um, you know, uh, sort of, uh, some place you can have a, a, uh, some water to drink, because they want, they used to have a tank of water you could help yourself to, but then children started playing with it and splashing it all over the place. So it'd be nice to have some water. Where you can just go in and get needed what you get what you need when you need it from the, like you go into a supermarket and buy your food I'd like to go to go into a health service and say I'm ill and they'll sort it out like that like you do if everybody had money to go into the private sector the whole private health service does it for you work on the NHS that was how I would like the NHS to be I'm, I'm going to say example for the community is better I think uh, the current trend is uh, people use 
be any unnecessary. Maybe the service will be more open, as I say, like uh, longer hours, weekend, so that people who do 9 to 5 job can go to see their GP after 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. And also the online uh, repeat prescription is very, very important. Currently, I have to go to my pharmacies to ask my pharmacies to go to my GP for a repeat prescription. So sometimes I forget that I have to go to my pharmacy before my blue trip. So the online one is good. And also making an appointment online is very, very good. Very convenient for this world. And let me see. Oh, immunization clinic. For example, traveling, which I'm traveling soon. I just realized that you need to make an appointment at least eight weeks in advance. Maybe the uh, immunization clinic. Yeah. yeah. I think one that had a balance in favour of services delivered in the community, in people's homes, and everything geared towards reducing the number of hospital admissions and readmissions, frequent readmissions, um, simply by delivering services close to home in ways that are much more um, patient friendly. One aspect of it would be is perhaps the public. The being able to feel more confident when they go for their visit to the GP to discuss their health, being able to, you know, manage their time effectively and move away from the doctor being on the on a on a pedestal and being the patient being able to work in partnership with their GP to improve their, their health or for whatever reason they're there. So empowering the patient to be Sometimes the patient says, I don't want to be asked by my doctor, uh, what do you think I should do? I hear that. I do want to be asked. But a lot of people feel that it's, it's the doctor's job to decide, and I think you've got to get that balance right. Definitely, because if you can't manage your own health, and not, I know not everybody can, and it's not a perfect world, but if, you, if you're aware of your own health issues, you know how to handle them, you can, and it's more about prevention than waiting until somebody gets to crisis point. You know, like being able to find out the a GP and not have to wait three weeks for an appointment, which can happen. <laughs> I know they're very good with emergencies, but it's long-term chronic care that is really not being looked at properly in this country. So many people uh, could cope with their illnesses, mild, you know, not serious illnesses, but they seem to always want to go to the doctor. And I think sometimes if they just said to see a nurse, the nurse would probably cope with their complaint rather than the doctor spending 10, 20 minutes with them and just saying, there's nothing much really wrong, you know, and you'll be all right. Uh, that would make life easier for other people in the NHS, uh, in the health service. Uh, it would shorten waiting times, you know, in all sorts of ways like that. Yeah, it also it keeps you fit because you know what you're doing, you know, rather than relying on... I'm un I'm unwell, make me make me better. If you're looking after not looking after yourself, then nobody else can look after you, can you? Yes, of course, you have the manager of the health because they are the ones that decide what to do, what not to do, and so control their own life. For example, people with diabetes, for example, they are the ones who know about the diet, what to eat, the insulin time, the exercise. So at the end, if they know why they're doing certain things, it's gonna benefit them in the long run. And also, in the end, maybe they can do uh, education for other people. Say, look, I do this well, then my weight is low, uh, less or my sugar is less because I cut down the cakes. That look very tempting over there. <laughs> and also exercise and things like that. And also prevent the long-term complication. I'm astonished sometimes that people have absolutely no knowledge of how they're put together. And I think managing something like chronic arthritis diabetes and things, you know, you can do a hell of a lot for yourself. And, and it pays off because you have fewer visits to the doctors and you know what's going on and when there are warning signs to recognise them. I've got arthritis, I've had two joint replacements and back surgery, but I go to a fabulous gym um, called Ability Bow and there they work with people who've had strokes, who've got MS, all ages and all levels of infirmity and I now can actually walk better than I did and I've, I've got more energy and I've lost a bit of weight so something like that is managing yourself.
you don't always feel like going out and getting on an exercise bike, but once you've made the effort, it, it does pay off. Yeah, there needs to be a shift away from that culture that what is um, being provided by the NHS and the PCT is all that is available, which isn't the case. Because I do um, gardening for people with physical and mental health. I do green therapy, so, you know, but trying to promote that, I mean, I, I did try and promote it with the COPD nurse at a particular clinic, it doesn't matter which one, and most of my referrals came by self-referrals, which I was rather disappointed, but that was something that would specifically have helped COPD, especially patients who had quite good mobility, so, so a shift in attitude from the professionals. It's a perfect health service because I grew up in the Channel Islands and you pay for everything now and it's, yes you do get to see a doctor the same day but it's expensive, whereas here at least it's free but you might have to wait. So ideally you want a health service that's very responsive to the needs of the patient and the family and all the carers and supporters. Some days you can walk in and you see smiley faces, not sort of, you know, as if you're being an absolute nuisance when you book an appointment. and. Um, uh, you know, uh, they just, um, do, even if they, they do feel tired, you have to have this ability to smile and welcome people as they walk in. Probably about 10 years ago it seemed to be okay and then it seems to, sorry, seems to get busier and busier now. Yeah, it's like waiting for buses. Everybody's been trying to get on the same bus at the same time. Everybody's trying to see the same doctor at the same time. Both in G, uh, GPs and hospitals, isn't it? I, I cut my finger while I was cleaning the fridge, silly, and it was pouring with blood. I went to A and E department. When they asked me where's the emergency, I said no, I cut my finger. But they were accident. Uh, they didn't say that you shouldn't come. They treated me immediately. They didn't manage to glue it because it's what a finger tip, and they have it bandage and pressure bandage. And no, I was treated with dignity and respect. You know, I got you know no qualms. I think they are very very good. But maybe from hindsight. I think people like me shouldn't be going unnecessary. I think we should be cautious of them because there are people for emergency. I, I was actually there to help my sister. She made a phone call. She was well. We went into it as community GPs uh, on a Sunday. Uh, she, she waited. She got to the time. Got, she got sorted out within 15 minutes. That was impressive. Well, mind you, she was a nurse, so uh, she probably knew how it worked. But still, you know, the person just turned away, the doctor dealt with her, she got a prescription, 15 minutes, and I was like, thank God for that, on a Sunday. But that was impressive. It just shows you that they do work 24-7, round the clock, and, and uh, yeah, a great salute, well done. Yeah, the, the last one I had was very good and very thorough. I had a malignant melanoma removed from my leg and the aftercare and the district nurse's contribution to that afterwards was excellent. Me, I, I have um, quite good experiences with my GP and um, the practice nurses and that so um, I, I'm quite happy with the services I, re I receive and I don't have to wait two weeks for an appointment or, or you know I can generally get one fairly quickly in that. Not always with my name GP but I that's okay too so no I'm, I'm quite happy. Yes. Online yes. booking and prescription reordering is Fantastic. very helpful. Yes, yes that definitely is, yes, yes. You've had a little it saves a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. But bearing in mind, you know, it, it mustn't become the only way because there's still a lot of people who no, can't. don't or can't or are too scared to, you know, to use IT. So um, it mustn't replace, you know, the, the, well, the human element, the receptionist or that. That's true. Yes.